it's Jim from JetsonHacks.com. A lot of people have been asking if they need to compile the kernel in order to get the Intel RealSense depth cameras to work with the Jetson Nano. I'm going to go over with you the performance and limitations of both approaches. In order to help you better understand the amount of lag from the camera to the display, I will not lip sync the audio to the video in post-production. You are watching a direct screencast from the Jetson Nano. Right now we are using an Intel RealSense D435i depth camera. We will go over using the Live RealSense SDK without the kernel and module modifications, and then we'll switch over to a machine that has some modifications and take a look at the differences. Here's a hint. This is a modified kernel machine. But before we do that, let's take a look at the hardware. The RealSense depth cameras have three imagers. There is an RGB imager and two infrared imagers. There is also an infrared emitter, which is useful for enhancing low light environments. And because we're looking at a RealSense D435i, there's also a motion module, an IMU. Let's take a look at that. There's an accelerometer stream and a gyroscope stream. Let's close that. If we take a closer look at one of the infrared streams, you can see that there is a laser which emits a pattern of dots. Yes, a laser which helps the camera's onboard computer construct a better depth map. The onboard computer takes these two infrared streams, rectifies the images, and then combines them into a depth map. Once the depth map has been constructed, it sends it over the wire to the host. The format is Z16, which is grayscale. You can see here in the RealSense viewer application that we put a false coloring on it. The native size coming out of the imagers is 1280 by 720. However, because the images are rectified, you end up with the most kind of natural size of the image to be 848 by 480. Let's look at the D435 in our RealSense viewer. Before we start this up, let's start up a D message log. Let's switch over to the bin directory. And let's run RealSense Viewer. We'll start up the RGB camera. There I am. So one of the things that you notice right away is that we are getting a lot of incomplete video frames. That has an effect on the frame rate. We can adjust the size of the frame here. Let's go to our RGB camera. Let's switch to the native resolution of the imager. 848 by 480 YUIV. Let me turn this back on. You can see that the error messages went away. Let's turn on our stereo module. You can see that we still get a few. The stereo module is running at 1280 by 720 right now. So let's readjust that. We'll turn on our infrared streams. We'll adjust this down to 848 by 480 and turn it on. So we have a few incomplete frames detected, but everything seems to work. So we'll do our standard tests. Jazz hands. T-Rex. Ah. Boy, that roar really <laughs> made it air out. I like that. <laughs> so that's part of it. Let's see if we can get it up to 60 frames a second. Change this. Let's switch our RGB camera over. Jazz hands. So you see here that we would have to parse out some of these frame drops. They're not terrible. I will show you something that is terrible. Let's minimize this for the moment. You can see here in our log that we get a lot of kernel oops. You can see there's quite a few here. <laughs> 
And this is basically because the kernel does not recognize the image formats. And because the video for Linux module does not understand these different formats, things like webcam applications get confused. So let's open up Cheese. And you can see that there's an error playing the video from the webcam. We'll go to Preferences. It sees that there's a device there, but it just doesn't understand how to play them. And then you can see that we also are missing timestamps. Let's compare this against a machine that has the kernel modified. Now we're on the machine where the kernel and the modules have been modified. I'll tell you a secret. It's the same machine. I just put in a different SD card. The first thing that you notice is we don't have the incomplete frame issues. We don't have the red nasties up on the screen and we get a pretty good frame rate. On the RGB camera here, I've cranked up the resolution to 1920 by 1080. Let's turn on our stereo module. We will enable the infrared streams. Turn it on here. And our red nasties are back. In part, that's just because of the resolution of the RGB camera. Let's adjust that. Let's crank that up to 60 frames a second. You can see we still have a little bit of lag here. Let's adjust the stereo module and let's put its frame rate up to 60. So that's a lot better. You kind of get a feel for what the performance capabilities are. The recorder that we're using to record the video stream is 30 frames per second. It's slightly better when you look at it on the monitor, but not much. So let's close this. You'll notice that we didn't have any console nasties here. This error message is printed if you do not use a D415 camera. Let's open up our webcam. There we are. So you can see here in a webcam application that it works. So that means that you're compatible with regular webcam types of calls when you do your video coding. To sum it up, if you're using a RealSense D435i camera, you will need to recompile the kernel and modules. Otherwise, the Live RealSense SDK will not recognize the camera. Otherwise, you saw what the other trade-offs were. In the next video, we'll go over how to actually build the kernel and the modules and install them. Do I want to watch a movie after this? Okay, what do you want to watch? Jaws. What's your favorite scene? The one where the shark eats the girl. Oh, I could have gone all day without hearing that. Uh, stop, stop, stop. I don't want to hear any more of that kind of talk. My favorite scene? It's where the shark gets killed. What do you mean it looked fake? It would never happen in real life. Uh, stop, stop, stop. How about Thunderball? Ooh, that's a good shark movie. Mm -hmm.